Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. Yeah, and we should make sure people understand some of the semantics. So LPA is the gene that codes for apolipoprotein little a, which then binds to an LDL and then turns an LDL from being just a garden variety LDL into an LP little a. And I think once people understand that, it becomes easier, I think, for us to communicate in this way. So I'm gonna restate that, and I really want everyone to understand this. So there's a gene, LPA is the gene, and this gene, everybody has this gene, but we have different variants of it. And so a subset of the population, and it varies considerably by ethnicity, so African, uh, East Asian, also quite high, down to Caucasian, and, uh, and, and, and um, um, uh, as you mentioned, Chinese, Japanese, et cetera. So you're gonna see different expressions of the apolipoprotein little a. This apolipoprotein little a, which we'll talk a lot about and what it looks like and its structure and what its heterogeneity is all about, but it wraps onto a low density lipoprotein. And then it becomes kind of a supercharged low, low density lipoprotein. It becomes a particularly nefarious LDL. Um, and we're going to talk about all the reasons why it's not responsive to the same treatments, et cetera. So, um, would you add anything to that? Like, I, I don't want to make it too complicated yet, but I want to make sure everybody understands when we talk about the LPA gene, which is identified during the GWAS, uh, experiments, how the genotype uh, allows us to not know everything about the phenotype, but we can start to get into trying to impute causal relationships. And eventually we're going to talk of course, about Mendelian randomization, where we can go even deeper. And anything you want to add to sort of the, the basics of this? No, I think you've explained it uh, perfectly, Peter. Maybe the only thing I would add is that uh, part of the genetic uh, heterogeneity among uh, different people is the, the, the apolipoprotein A isoform size. So uh, people express uh, different uh, LPA isoforms. Some, some are bigger than, uh, than the other. And that, that probably, uh, that, well, that actually plays an important part of the uh, equation, explaining why some people have a higher LPA little A than others. I'm glad you reinforced that point because, and this is going to get into a little bit of chemistry, which I know some people will understand and some might not. One of the big challenges here, as you've now alluded to twice, is the difficulty in measurement. Now, when we look at something like ApoB, and people who listen to this podcast a lot will be very familiar with ApoB. We talk an awful lot about it. One of the things we talk about is that by measuring the concentration of ApoB, you can completely and accurately measure the concentration of the atherogenic particles, the majority of which are LDL. And the reason for that is twofold. The first is that every LDL has one and only one ApoB 100 particle on it. The second is that all ApoBs are the same size. Therefore, they have a molar weight. And by knowing the mass, you know the number. Now, there are, I always like to point out two contrasts to this, right? The HDL particle, by contrast, has multiple ApoAs on it, and this is totally different from apo little a so we're not going to talk about that other than to say it's apo big a and therefore you don't have a unique number and then of course with lp little a you have the problem that you raised which creates enormous challenges there is no molar weight for apo little a right this is this is the fundamental problem in the assay of trying to measure this thing Exactly. And uh, we're, we're, we're really moving in the right direction in terms of getting the LPA measurement in uh, nanomoles per, per liter. And uh, there's, there's more and more labs that are, that are doing this. And this is clearly the, the, the way to go. We have to move away from measurements in, in mis milligrams per, per deciliter, which is really influenced by the uh, isoform size of LPA and the measurement in uh, nanomolar will actually give you a much better sense of the number of LPA particles in the circulation. And that's what we should be uh, aiming at. Now, will that the, the require electrophoresis? Of... How will that actually be measured? Or will it use it's, NMR? It's... I mean, 
it's going to be used, measured through uh, immunoturbidimetric uh, assays, so not by uh, by NMR. And NMR can actually give you a, a, a pretty good estimate of uh, LDL particle number, but you have to use uh, antibodies to 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 measure uh, to measure LPA. Thank you.